Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at how to make this melting effect using simulation nodes in Blender. So this is a fairly simple setup to make and uh, it creates a very satisfying effect. So if you want to check out the project files, they're going to be on my Gumroad and on my Patreon page and uh, also on my YouTube membership page. So yeah, let's jump in. If I think first, we're going to need our model and I'm just going to search my a library for that and uh, the materials are already set up so let's go to geometry nodes and uh, start working on our simulation nodes so the way simulation nodes work is that uh, you have this simulation zone which you can access using shift a simulation zone and uh, when you add it uh, you basically just have to connect the geometry input uh, into the simulation input and then the geometry output into the output like that uh, you will lose the materials so you might want to bring them back using a set material i'm going to bring that back like that the way the simulation zone works is that uh, it works as a loop that runs on every frame so for example if i add a set position here and i just increase the offset by 0.1 and hit play you can see this just goes up by 0.01 every frame if i go out out of this simulation zone and just bypass it for now and play back you can see nothing happens and uh, if I move this, let's say, f let's say one meter and hit play, nothing happens because if you are outside the simulation zone, you are just setting a value once and that's it. But if you plug this into the simulation zone, now let's preview uh, this now. It means that uh, this, whatever you have inside the zone is going to run as a loop every frame. So every frame is going to offset the position of this geometry by one meter every frame. So or every time this loop runs. This works for other nodes. So the transform node, if I just do a rotation on the Z, uh, that means that I, on every frame, it's going to rotate the geometry uh, 0.5 degrees every frame. And, and sometimes if you see you have changed the values, but uh, this is, you have not seen any updates in the viewer, you just have to reset the simulation by going back to frame zero. And now you can see that uh, everything updates. Let me just slow this down a bit. Yeah, reset and now you can see what we're getting so yeah that's how simulation zone works yeah let's do that and i use a set position uh this time i want to just push this down by negative one now you can see that uh, the geometry just goes down uh, like that so like we usually do outside the simulation zone we can do a set position uh using noise uh, so if i do a set position using noise and uh, i'm just going to apply this noise on the z axis uh, so if i grab a noise texture you can see how we're adding distortion to the noise. I'm just going to bring this to 0.5 and I just scale this up using a vector math, amplify the effect using a vector math. You can see basically how we can achieve a melting effect with this setup here. So if you're just running this outside the simulation zone and hit play, nothing really happens because this is applied just once and uh, is persistent within uh, your timeline. If we do this, in this within the simulation nodes, basically just setting this up to work with the simulation nodes, what we're going to see, uh, I need to make sure that I'm previewing this, you see that uh, this noise is going to be animated. So I'm going to just use negative one. So you can see what we're getting, which is, I think, interesting. But uh, it seems that uh, the entire thing is melting at once, which is not what we want. What we can do is just make sure that uh, we use, we control the simulate the melting area by another object. So I'm going to add a UV sphere like this. Let me scale it up, apply the scale, and uh, just drag it into uh, our simulation. Uh, because we want to create a mask, uh, that uh, a proximity mask that tells the simulation how close the vertices of this mesh are to this mesh and it can use that mask to determine, determine what parts should be melting. So I'm going to use a geometry nodes proximity. Now the target is going to be our geometry here. Now if we look at this, make sure I pin this and just, uh, let's preview this. Ah, make sure that uh, you set this to relative so that the position of this object is updated within uh, geometry nodes. So you can see now when I, whenever I move this, the mask is also updated. I'm also going to change the display to wireframe so that we can see the inside of this. And I can see we are going to run into an issue where we are creating a, a ring like this uh, because we want this area here inside the sphere to melt, but because our mask is just creating a ring, uh, that means that uh, only the black area is going to melt. Now, let me just show you 
how this is going to work. So I'm going to, if I play back, let me, if I play back, you see what's happening. Why do we have a keyframe here? Okay, you, see, you can see what's happening. Everything is melting, but uh, we want to use this proximity mask uh, to scale things down, to determine what parts of the mesh are going to melt. If I duplicate this scale and set it to zero, this can scale down the noise effect we are having here. Hence, if we, if we have it at zero, it means that uh, this effect here, this uh, noise effect is not being applied at all. And uh, if I bring it to one, that means it's going to be applied. And if I bring it to zero, it means it's not going to be applied. So instead of just using a single value here, we can use our mask here to drive that area. So in areas where we have a black mask, uh, that means that that area is going to have uh, the simulation and uh, the rest is good. Uh, actually, in this instance, the black area is just not going to contain uh, the simulation. It's just going to persist and uh, the other areas are going to melt down. So basically, that's, that's the reason why we are adding this. And I think the this is really fast, so I'm going to scale this down by 0.5, so that it's a bit slower. Yeah, something like that. You can see we're already achieving the melting effect, but it's only melting in the white areas instead of the black areas. So, and uh, the great thing is that if I move this around, you can see how things are, are melting. But uh, we want to invert uh, the mask first, so I'm going to come here and I use a map range, flip this around, and don't forget to connect this back, and uh, that should uh, give us, so we, wherever we have the, whenever we move this, we get, we get the melting parts. Like I said, this is a fairly simple setup, yeah. So, but uh, again, we are running into an issue where when we move this, this uh, geometry, uh, because there is no geometry or there are no points inside uh, this UV sphere, we're getting a, a ring instead of uh, a spherical mask. So what I mean is that I, I want the interior of this mask to be white as well, not just a ring like that. And uh, the reason why we have a ring is because the interior doesn't have any geometry. If you wanted to add uh, a mask inside white areas into the interior of the sphere we can duplicate we can either duplicate this so that we have multiple spheres inside but uh, that also creates a few issues uh, where we have rings like that because again the inside of this doesn't have any uh, points uh, but uh, this could work just fine uh, you can even blur this using a blur node or a blur attribute Need to preview this so you can see how we can blur this and it could be uh, pretty good and uh, actually let's preview the entire thing as a metal you can see with just a few things we are almost good to go but uh, we can still make this better instead of using these rings multiple rings uh we could do it differently so let's go back let's first preview our node you can see we still have and let me disable this blur node so that we still see the ring clearly instead of having this we can uh, fill in the inside of the volume of the sphere by first changing this to a uh, volume to mesh to volume and uh, then filling this volume with points uh, so distribute points into volume and uh, change the geometry proximity to use points instead of uh, and if you first look at this here you can see that uh, we are adding points inside our geometry and uh, those points are now what are determining our proximity node and uh, if we turn on the blur node we can blur uh, those nodes those points uh, because right now we don't have enough points that's why you see uh, that uh, we get those black spots there or white spots. And uh, the fewer points you have, if you don't want those dots, we can add a blur node uh, to blur the effect a bit. And uh, yeah, you can see what we have. 
can just bring this down or increase the density a bit so that you have more points and uh, just blur that a bit now, now that is uh, much better if we go back to previewing this you can see how things are melting as we move this around one other effect we could add here is a flow uh, so that when this melts it doesn't go through uh, the ground so i'm going to add a, plan, a flow so now what we want to do is make sure that uh, this doesn't melt through uh, the flow like it's doing right now and uh, the way we're going to do that is basically do the same thing for the sphere but instead of things melting as they get closer to the sphere we can make them st stop melting as they get closer to the flow and uh, to do that we're just going to do the same thing so let me just uh, grab this here just bring our flow and uh, create a proximity node just going to drag this here make sure we're using relatives as well let's look at this you can do faces and i see we have a gradient that goes up like that so and uh, again we can use this to scale down uh, this noise effect remember the noise effect is the melting effect i use a scale node here just put it here so we can after doing that we can come in here and just let me get rid of this if we play back and I just do this you can see everything melts but it's no longer going through uh, the flow uh, which i think is what we want but uh, the problem we are having is let me just move this away the melting is really really fast compared to what we had before so the reason for that if is uh if we look at this this value this distance is that uh, we have values going above one because the proximity or the distance from uh, the flow to the points up here increases so that's why we have values going from zero uh, some going up to 15 some up to 20 so those are being multiplied and uh, that's why you see that uh, if we go back to if I remove this preview the points up here melt really fast compared to the points down here because those are being multiplied with a high value compared uh, to the ones below so what we can do is just map the range the maximum value could be the height of this which I think is about 20 so and just map it back to a value of one things are starting to melt at the speed we want but uh, we can keep this to one uh, so that we have a consistent a consistent speed and uh, if you want to scale to increase the speed of this you can even just uh, let's see we can add another scale value here and just expose that in our geometry nodes so this would be the melting speed so if i increase this to 10 for example uh, this should melt even faster perfect look at that very very simple setup now one other thing i did in my version is i added this glowing material which is fairly simple so we already have a material set at uh, the copper material here but what we can do is uh, add the heat element uh, to it so if we look at the original version you see that uh, whenever i move this around uh, things are heated while they melt so let's do the same here so for that uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to just store this mask here that we're using to melt things into a, vari a variable so let's store this store this into a named value variable it's going to grab i think yeah this i'll call this heat mask just copy and now i can go into the material we have here so i'll go to the shader editor and uh, look at the copper material we have what i want to do is add the heat area so i'm just going to bring in the attribute node and uh, paste in the heat mask and you can see that's it I'm going to let's see so this goes into the color i'm going to use a mix node mix color like this and i use this as the factor so if we preview this yeah we're already starting to see something interesting so 
quickly you can see yeah we already have something that that is interesting so come here and uh, we also want this to be a bit glowy so i'm going to use a ramp and so we want some areas to be okay something like that oh this should go into the factor and this should go into the color yeah so we have something like that another thing we need to do is uh, have this as the emission color and i'm also going to have another gradient or another ramp to control the emission strength so i'm just going to do a math note to amplify uh, this so i'm just going to multiply this by say four i think that looks good and uh, maybe give this a 10 make it really pop and i think it's too fast so let's do five for the melting speed that's it um yeah if you want to take a look at this project file again all links are going to be in the description thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video